on the table. God has been good to us, but we don't worship him for what he's done. We worship him for who he is. He's the Alpha and Omega. The Bible says, from the beginning and the end, the Bible says, He's the sinner savior. The Bible says, He's the lover of our souls. We came here to lift up the name of the King of all kings, the most high God, the true and living God. I don't know what you came here for, but I came here to lift up the name of the most high God. Has he been good? Has he been good? Has he been good? Yeah. Yeah. When you look back over your life, you can find something to worship him for. I don't know about you, but I should have been dead. But God didn't see fit for it to be that way. I could be sick, but God didn't see for it to be that way. I could be destitute, but God didn't see. We serve a good God Amen. that does exceedingly, abundantly, yes. above all that we can ask or think. But we don't worship him for that. We worship him for simply being God and God alone. Do I got some praises in the place on today? Matthew chapter number three beginning with the 13th verse. Matthew chapter 3 verse 13 then Jesus went from Galilee uh -huh. to the Jordan River to be baptized by John yes sir yes but John tried to talk him out of it talk <laughs> I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. Uh -huh. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done. Yep. Yes. For we must carry out all that God Required. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So John agreed yes. to baptize him. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. For a few moments, on today, I want to Amen. talk to you from the subject. This is how we do it. Uh -huh. This is how we do it. And as I said this to my mother, she jokingly texted me back. Oh, Montel Jordan. <laughs> but this is how we do it. In the past 30 or 40 years, we can all agree that there has been a significant decline in people being excited about church. There has been a significant, significant drop off of people being interested in the ministry of the church. There has also been a decline in the church attendance. My Lord, yes, sir. Amen. And involvement 
by those who were once faithful to the cause. Yeah. Mm. If they're not as faithful as they used to be anymore. Yeah. All right. Needless to say, the church has lost its impact. One of the reasons that we've lost our impact is the fact that we've become individuals who have slowly moved away from fulfilling the Great Commission. All right. We understand that the Great Commission tells us to go and make disciples of all who are lost. Amen. And we are to be godly influences to them and around them. Yes. And we are to push for conversion no matter how long it takes. And we are to work in excellence to draw the lost to a place where God can speak to their hearts Amen. and to convert them and it is our duty to bring them into the fellowship of believers by baptizing them uh -huh. in the name of the Father, yes, the Son, uh -huh. and the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Furthermore, our mandate, Brother Brown, is to equip them. Amen. But first and foremost, we need to be equipped. Yes, and we need to teach them to observe the things that we are observing with the assurance that no matter how hard it gets, God is with us. In the midst of the storm, God is with us. When the knife is fresh in your back, God is still with us. With folks calling you everything but a child of the Almighty God, God is still with us. However, we have made it our mandate to stay comfortable in the church. Mm -hmm. So we want to cool in the summer. My God. Well. The temperature needs to be just right. Yeah. Yes. Or you call the trustees. Mm -hmm. In the winter, it needs to be warm. But see, we are suffering. From what I call convert contentmentitis. Well. <laughs> Instead of being disciples of Jesus Christ with the burning drive and commitment to walk in godly obedience, with an eagerness to go places that are uncomfortable to make more disciples, we are content to stay comfortable. Uh huh. And we are reluctant to teach because we've grown timid. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're not equipped to teach the good news. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, because we are not consistently walking in those teachings yes. outside of the church, people aren't as interested anymore. Well, mm -hmm. They're not coming to be converted. Yeah. And they are not interested in hearing what we to say if we desire to look at this factually from a standpoint we can understand if we look at life like a race that we physically run most people listen to me closely finish the race called life before the church gets out the starting blocks and we cannot influence their lives that way. This is mainly due to the fact that we decided to do life our own way. Well. We decided to do ministry our way. And we slowly drifted away from the, what God wants and are content in doing what we think we should be doing. Yeah. Come on, Doc. My brothers and my sisters, 
We all must get to a place where we are doing what God requires. Uh -huh. We are to do what he says and how he says do it. Mm -hmm. See, there are many misconceptions in the household of faith. Mm -hmm. Many believe that it's leadership's job to serve. Mm -hmm. It's leadership's job to maintain the ministry of the church and upkeep the house of the Lord. However, my brothers and my sisters, I come by here to let you know by the mere fact that we have announced our faith in front of one another. Amen. By the mere fact that we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, yes. baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are all ministers Amen. of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, because of our faith, and because we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, we should be disciples and not simply converts. Uh -huh. Amen. Because of our faith, and because we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, we are required to love God and to love one another. Amen. Because of our faith, and because we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, we should be willing to go to the highways and the byways seeking those who need a savior because of our faith. And because we've been washed in the lamb, we should be willing to build one another up Amen. and not seek to tear one another down because of our faith. And because we've been washed in the blood of the lamb, we should be willing to bring the lost sheep into the house of the Lord. Amen. So we can equip them and bring them into the fellowship of the saints by washing their sins away by being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We have to have the assurance that no matter what we endure, no matter what folks say about us, yes. he is with us. Yes. See, we're going to get off course sometimes. But we know that he is with us. Yes. Sometimes we get unsure about the way we take and the company that we need to keep. But he is with us. Yes. When the body and the mind don't work how they used to work. You see, my body and my mind don't work the way it used to work. But I have the confidence in knowing he is with me. Yes. When we find ourselves in a state of sadness and sorrow, he is with us. Yes. When we've been betrayed or rejected, he is with us. Yes. The song writer says, I've seen the lightning flash yes. and I've heard the thunder roll and I felt sin breakers dash. Yes. Trying to slay the cop of my soul. But see, I heard a voice from heaven yeah. telling me, still fight on. Because he promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. Do you got that testimony on today? Amen. Amen. The author of this text, by unanimous agreement of the early church fathers, is the former tax collector and converted disciple, Matthew. We also know that this account is the story of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. We understand by our research that it is well researched and it is a informative eyewitness account that reassures the reader that Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah that we all need. And to both the Jew and the Gentile, this Jesus of Nazareth is a fulfillment of true hope and true peace that we all need. Amen. Do we all need Jesus? Amen. Amen. This account of the life of Jesus of Nazareth is used by Matthew to draw yes, yes. 
the unbelieving Jew to a place yes. where they can recognize Jesus for who he is. Amen. But our understanding on today, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is the Messiah who is the Savior and Redeemer of our soul. Amen. Do I got some folks that are grateful that he is our Savior and our Redeemer? Amen. Furthermore, this book is an evangel evangelistic tool to those believing Gentiles uh -huh. that this long awaited Messiah, Sister Sharon, is for them too. In the text, Jesus arrived at the Jordan River from Galilee. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus' request was that John the baptizer baptize him. Amen. Amen? Amen. What I want us to understand that this baptism of Jesus, Deacon Woods, was a requirement by God. <coughs> Tell your neighbor, a requirement by God. By God. Work with Work with Understand that John the Baptizer, or John the Baptist as we call him, was a co-laborer in ministry. Amen. Yes. And John as his co-laborer in ministry inadvertently tried to stop the requirements yes. of God. All right. See my brothers and sisters, my sisters. Has everyone, has anyone ever tried to talk you out yeah. of doing what God requires? Amen. Let me ask you another question. Have you ever tried to talk yourself? <laughs> Yes sir. yes, sir. All right now. <laughs> Have you ever tried to talk yourself out of doing what God requires? See, some folks are trying to manipulate you out of doing what God wants you to do. But see, it's our mandate to get them out the way and get ourselves out the way and do what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. John, he simply stated to Jesus, I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. Amen. I need to be baptized by you. So why in the world are you coming to me? <laughs> <laughs> Let me throw this in parenthetically. <laughs> I don't think John was trying to be disrespectful. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, 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 right. Me either. He wasn't. Because do you remember how he used Jesus? Yeah. He is the Lamb of God. Yeah. 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 Who came mm -hmm. to take. Uh -huh. Away the sins of the world. Yes. So he wasn't being disrespectful, he was being respectful. Yes. But in him being respectful, he was trying to move away from what God requires. God. Have you ever tried to move away? From what God requires, out of respect for someone else, out of respect for their feelings, out of respect for what they're going through. But see, it's still our mandate, no matter how they feel, to do what God requires. Amen. So, no matter what folks say about us, be the church. 
Because that's what God requires. Amen. Amen. Yes. If you're tired, still study your Bible. Amen. Because this is what God requires. Amen. I don't care what your neighbor said about you. Love them anyway. Amen. Because this is what God requires. If God says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves, get to church. Amen. Because that's what God requires. Amen. But see, Jesus, this is what we got to do to ourselves and to our brothers and our sisters. Jesus puts John in remembrance of the requirements of God. Sometimes we have to put ourselves in remembrance of what God requires. Sometimes we got to tell other folks, step back, because I got to do what God has called me to do. I got to serve the way God called me to serve. I have to say what God called me to say because that is what God requires. Amen. 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 It's my desire on today that we all understand. Deacon Simpson, they're going to be robots. They're going to be roadblocks from within and without. Sometimes we set up the roadblocks in our own lives. But understand there will be roadblocks but if we are committed to doing what God requires, take that right hand. (laughs) Gotta go, gotta go. But there will be robots. There will be detours. Sometimes folk are going to try to hinder our progress. And sometimes we may try to hinder our own progress. But we have to press forward. Yes. Physically, yeah. mentally, and spiritually as we continue yes. to hold up the bloodstained banner. Yes. However, God is still going to use us. In the midst of our human frailness. Uh In the midst of your difficulties. Uh In the midst of your sickness. In the midst of your distress. That doesn't negate what God's called you to do. And what you do, you're going to do it in excellence if you'll do it for his glory. Amen. We have to do what God requires. You know why? Because this is how we do it. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. So how do we execute what God requires in the midst of detours set up by ourselves and others? How do we engage ministry How do we engage the prayer ministry? How do we engage the mothers and the nurses? How do we engage the ministers, the deacons, the deaconess, the trustees, the missionaries, the ushers, the children, the men and women of hope, and everybody the way God wants us to do it. Amen. Sister Joyce, I'm glad you asked. (laughs) Number one, we must be attentive to the voice of the Lord with a willing heart and a proactive heart. That simply means we got to take charge. Nobody's going to make you do it. You have to have a made up mind to do it. Amen. And we simply do it not for what he's done, well. but 
for who he is. Number two, we must be willing to go where God wants us to go. Uh -huh. And we cannot allow discouragement yes, sir. or allow misdirection All right. to enter the equation. Amen. So you remember how they say you have to drive defensively? You got to serve defensively. Amen. Stand tall, Doc. You know how it is. As you're driving, uh -oh. it's a crazy folk on the road. All right. All right. But you have to drive in such a way that you avoid yes. those who can't drive. Yes. Amen. Amen. As you serve. Amen. Keep on going. Amen. Amen. All right now. Amen. You have to drive in such a way. Come on, Doc. Say it. Prayerfully pray as you drive to avoid all the potholes, to avoid the detours, and to, the, and to avoid all the folk on the road that don't want you to get to your final destination. All right. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. We got to learn to serve defensively. All right. And last but not least, listen, listen to this. This is this is this is this is key. We have to do what God tells us to do. All right. Yes. Uh, yes. Go. We can't do it our way. Come on. Go ahead. Because a lot of us know what God wants us to do. Amen. Watch yourself. Oh yeah. Say it. But we're trying to get it done. Uh -huh. Out of the way. Yes. yes. Uh, come on, sir. Yes. Out of the way. Oh, my God. Leads to destruction. All right. But let me tell you something. You can do something in your own power and strength. Yes. And succeed, uh -huh. but fail miserably. All Amen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but. We must do what God tells us to do. Amen. And we must do it how he says to do it. Amen. It just leads us back to the theme of this text. Do what God requires. So my brothers and my sisters, if we're going to be the church uh -huh. that God is calling us to be, we must carry out all that God requires. Uh -huh. If we're going to make an impact in the lives of the lost, well, we must carry out all that God requires. Amen. It's if we're going to touch the heart yes. of those who have been broken, we must carry out all that God requires. If we're going to meet the need in the community of Central Iceland and the surrounding area, we must carry out yes, all that God requires. If we're going to build up the kingdom of Almighty God, we must carry out all that God requires. See, the songwriter said, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. Uh -huh. See, it sounds like music in my ear. In my ear yes. The sweetest name on earth. Yeah. And the chorus says, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. See, because he first loved me. See, we must have a genuine love for God. First, that's first. HBC. Yeah. This is how we do it. Yeah. Then, then we must let go of the past yeah. and love one another. Yeah. This is how we do it. Yeah. We must be willing to go yeah. and keep on going. Yeah. This is how we do it. Amen. We must equip ourselves and equip one another. Yeah. This is how we do it. As disciples, Amen. we must be willing to go yes. and be uncomfortable. Yes. 
This is how we do it. Hallelujah. We must walk in the obedience of Almighty God. We must be willing to give God all the credit. Yes. We must be willing to grow and to change. Yes. This yes. is how we do it. Yes. Amazing grace. Uh -huh. How sweet the sound mm -hmm. that saved a wretch like me. Oh, See, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. If we are willing yeah. to embrace God's grace, yeah. see, I believe a change is going the way. If we walk in the light of Jesus' love, yeah. Reverend Slater, I believe a change is on the way. Yeah. If we have a made up mind oh, to serve Him faithfully, oh, seeking grant. I believe change yeah. is on the way. Yeah. If we're striving yeah. to be the best that we can be, yeah. Deacon Belches, I believe that change is on the way. Yeah. See, my brothers and my sisters, this change brings elevation in what is required. Yeah. Elevation in our ministries. Wow. Elevations yeah. in our worship. Elevation in our praise. Yeah. Elevation in our homes. Yeah. Elevation in our relationships. Well, See, every round goes higher and higher. Yeah. Every day should be sweeter than the day before. Well, our hearts should overflow with joy yeah. because we are soldiers yeah. of the cross. Oh. Tell your neighbor, I'm a soldier. Yeah. In the army of the Lord, I got my water clothes on. I got my breastplate on. I got my sword. I got my shield. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep pushing in the army of the Lord. Why? Because praise God, baby. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I need. Thy hands have the Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me. Great. See, when I'm faithful, see, he's faithful unto me. When I'm discouraged, he's in the encouraging to me. When I don't feel like going on, he keeps motivating me. When I'm lost, God keeps guiding me. When I'm broken, he keeps fixing me. When I can't see, to find my way. Yeah. He keeps being a light yeah. unto me. Yeah. When I don't feel like serving, yeah. he keeps energizing yeah. me. Yeah. When I fall short yeah. of his glory, yeah. he keeps forgiving yeah. me. Yeah. When I get distracted, yeah. the Lord yeah. keeps calling yeah. me. Yeah. When I feel like all hope is gone, yeah. he keeps blessing me. Yeah. See, he keeps on Blessing me, though I might not be on top. He just keeps on blessing me. As I'm asking him or not, he just keeps on blessing me. See, everybody, I must tell how you bless me, Jesus, in spite of myself. How you keep me, Jesus, in spite of myself. How you maintain me, Jesus. In spite of myself, yes, and you keep on making a way out of nowhere. Uh, in spite of myself, yeah. my brothers and my sisters, yeah. we got to keep on, keep on. doing yeah. what God yeah. requires. Yeah. Be connected, yeah. be committed, yeah. keep learning, yeah. keep equipping, yeah. keep working, yeah. keep being examples, yeah. keep evangelizing, yeah. keep sacrificing. Yeah. Keep loving, yes. keep fulfilling wow. all that God requires. Yes. This yes. is how yes. we do it. Yes. Nobody does it like HMBC does. This is how we do it. So, how do we engage ministry? The way God requires. Number one, 
We must be attentive to the voice of the Lord with the willing heart and a proactive mindset. Number two, we must be willing to go where God wants us to go. And we cannot allow discouragement or allow misdirection to enter the equation. We must be sincere yeah. and intentional yeah. about moving forward in God. Yeah. And last but not least, we must do what God tells us to do. My Lord. Yes. And we must do it Jesus. how he said do it. Yes. Do, do it. what God, what God requires. Yes. Yeah. This is how we do it. Yeah. God bless you.